to that. Well, that's typical. Are you going to go back and figure it out? Well, I was doing that, and then you got angry that I didn't show up to the okay. call. <laughs> oh, Jonathan doesn't know this, probably. I had to get multiple reminders from Daniel that were very punctual. <laughs> like, on the hour, he was like, this is your 24-hour notice before recording. And then this is your, like, four-hour notice before recording. Look, it's not personal, Ainsley, but... Uh, I think you're pretty aware that you don't have the best track record in making these episodes. I don't think I can be fully to blame for that, though. I didn't say you're fully to blame. Again, it's not you know anything personal. It's just very personal. I think I'm you're here. In the top five of backing out of commitments. Who's number podcast. one? I don't know. I don't have a rank. So I'm just. It seems like you do. All right. Okay, I'll think about it. We'll go to the theme song. This is the Experience Podcast with me and someone else. Jonathan. Ainsley. Okay, anyway. I didn't know I was going first. Like, come on. Like, there's no preparation there. I get yelled at every time that I talk to you soon. <laughs> Again, I'm not yelling at you, Ainsley. It's a stern talk. I get a glare. He's just trying yeah. to help you out, you know? Are you well, in anyway. a uniform? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I have work today, Ainsley. I have stuff going on. I didn't know He's a working still- man. I'm a working man, okay? I also He's bringing like- in that money. Fighting fires. That's part of the job. It's not the main job. It's a small part. Right now, right now it's all my job. But I go back to the classroom in a, in a week. So, more tests. Well, I hope they have someone looking after, you know, everything while you're getting trained. We wouldn't want to see on the news Daniel Silverstein too busy at fire training, nuclear power plant melts down. Well, I I don't do that. I'm not qualified to operate it yet. Yeah, I don't even know how any of that works. So it's yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But All right. Ainsley, you're looking for a job. I mean, am I really at the moment? At the moment, I'm just trying to manage this semester. What's so complicated? Um, I took a nice week-long break from doing work because I thought I deserved it. In the <laughs> middle of the semester? Myself. It was last week. We had a four-day week. And I had done all my work leading up to that week. And I was like 100% caught up and ahead. So I was like, oh, I'll take this week off. I'll just go to lectures. I won't do my other assignments because nothing's due for another like week. Um, and now this week sucks. And I have three more midterms next week and two tomorrow. Okay, see, most people, you know, I think you're on the right track there, Ainsley. A lot of people will do what you did, but they take like one day off, you know, take an evening off. They don't take a full week off. Jonathan? Yeah, no. See, today was my day off. Like, I watched, like, or this afternoon was, I watched, like, five episodes of Community instead of doing work. But also, I was up doing work at, like, 6 a.m., so it balances out, you know? I went to sleep at, like, 6 a.m., so... Oh, my gosh. I go to work. Have you taken health, Ainsley? Like, taken health? Here like APPH, like, yeah. <laughs> no, I have not, not yet. Okay, well, you need to it sign shows. up for it next semester so they can teach you about going to sleep before 6 a.m. and how it's good for you. I mean, we're pushing forward. I got it moved up to, like, 2.33 as of recently. Jeez. I mean, I understand I mean, Jonathan and I are on the way other end of the spectrum, but... Still, yeah, no, Daniel's like super weird, but he doesn't even keep a calendar. You just like think mentally about everything you have to do, and you're like, Ooh, it's three o'clock, I'm doing this now. Like, what? Yeah, it was three o'clock, and I was like, Time to send Ainsley a reminder. That just creeps me yeah. out. I wouldn't even be able to tell you what time it was, 
And then it would have been like four hours later. I was like, wait, I was supposed to do something earlier. I don't remember what it was. Whatever. What were you doing at that time? At what time? At three? Hmm? No, in your hypothetical situation. How do you lose time? I don't look at the time very often. I don't have a watch. Jonathan? You need to get a watch. Always got to have it on you. You know what I'm saying? Isn't yours like the wrong time anyways? Yeah, it's two minutes slow. My smartwatch is somehow two minutes slow, even though it's like connected to the internet, which makes no sense to me. But is it a sync? It's, I, I don't know. I've like restarted it a bunch of times. I factory reset it the other day. And it just still stays like two minutes behind. So I have to like set all my alarms like two minutes early, you know? So that's just okay. an extra step I have to go through, which is pretty annoying, but still got to have the watch though. I've never heard of that though. Yeah, I have no idea. I like, I emailed like the people like tech support about it and they were like, hmm, do all these things. And I did all those things and it still didn't work. And I didn't buy like the or like my warranties up on it, and I didn't buy the like extended like replacement plan or whatever. So I'm just gonna be two minutes late for like the rest of my life now. Is pretty much what I've settled on. Well, that's seven hundred dollars down the drain. <laughs> it really, it really is though. But you know what can you do? Maybe, maybe one day when I when I graduate and have a nice job and I'm making that engineering money. I can buy myself a new one that actually tells the proper time. Or, or I could get the like, you know, like normal like watch out of my drawer and right next to me and put it on and be right. But it doesn't count my steps. You know, it doesn't tell me how long I slept or anything. So what's Should the use of that? Watch? Oh, now that's an idea. I, that's an idea. Well, I guess I'd have to figure out if you know I'm going to like Two on one wrist or double wrist it, but I like that. <laughs> Catch me at band practice tomorrow, knowing the time and my steps for once. Can you get like the five different watches, but like each one is like the different time zone? So you're like, ah, oh, what time is it in Europe right now? That'd be great. I like the way you think. I like the way you think. We might could do this. Oh, did you hear that someone was uh, positive in the band? Yes, yes. If not, honestly, a trumpet, I'm hoping. It's not. Um, I, so my guess, I don't know if I should be even saying any of this, is this it's not out. a trumpet. This comes out like, the 29th. Yeah. So by then, this information will be out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't been notified that I, I was in contact with them. So then I assume they don't play trumpet, right? Mm -hmm. And then like there was like no degrees like connecting me. So then like I assume they don't play clarinet either because they play clarinet. Kenna would have been like a first degree connection. I would have been like second or whatever. So I don't know. Honestly, I think it's pretty impressive that we're what, like four weeks into the semester? Are we four weeks, four weeks into the semester and like a group of 200 people just had their first person test positive? Five weeks, yeah. I mean, that's honestly pretty, pretty good. So I got my negative test results, so I'm running with it. Yeah, my brother's at uh, University of Miami, and he was saying that he was like bragging in our family group chat earlier. He's like, "Ha, huh, I tested negative once again," and I was like, "Oh, like how many times have you been tested?" He was like, "Twice." I was like, "I just went for my eighth test," and I'm like, "All negative, baby." Yeah, I've gotten tested like once a week just with like the on-campus testing, and there have been like three times I've gone off campus on the weekend and gotten one because like my like pool got said hey you need further diagnostic testing so i was like oh my god you know i better not have covid and i wouldn't find out till like the next week so i wouldn't just got tested on my own and it was fine but yeah wild but you know we'll be all right we just need to make a band out of only the trumpet section because we know we're good just remove all the other sections Hey, it would sound pretty similar, not going to lie. We are a dominant we, person in the band. And then we could have the whole section of the game on Saturday instead of half of it. True. There we go. But yeah, so I'll see what happens with that. I don't know. Daniel? 
I have nothing to contribute. You have nothing. <laughs> You're telling me you aren't living in constant fear of one of the 200 people you spend two hours with three days a week contracting COVID and then giving it to you? Well, I can't say I do, honestly, but. <laughs> Yeah, like, I should be more scared. Like, I was really scared at the beginning, and now I'm, like, getting worried because I'm not scared. So I want someone close to me to, like, have a scare so that I'm back to being, like, terrified. I feel like that's, um, you know, when you've already got, like, two tests that you're stressed out about, you don't need the stress about, you know, getting being <laughs> like, positive for definitely. COVID, too. So. I mean, it would yeah. help me get my studies back on track. It would. You'd have nothing to do but study. I mean, I have a lot of seasons of Criminal Minds to watch before the year is over because they're about to delete it off of Netflix. So mm, that's so sad. I don't know. It's just like one of those shows that, like, where Netflix is not going to have it next year. What network is it on? Netflix. <laughs> that's not the original. Oh, was it a Netflix? It's not a Netflix original. It's CBS. No, it's not. I don't know what it is. Yeah, something. CBS. Yeah, you got to get CBS All Access. Mm. I have that, I think. That's how I watched the football game last Saturday. On CBS All Access? Oh, wait, no. The football game was on ABC. What did I watch? I watched another football game on CBS or whatever. Apparently, if you get AT&T U-verse, you get access to, like, well, everything. You make, so You may get, like, a year for free or something. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, that doesn't make any sense. AT&T is HBO. I don't know what you did, Jonathan. I have no idea, but I put in my dad's email and password, and it said, hey, you can watch this now. So <laughs> You can watch it on the NFL mobile app for free. You can even watch it on the fantasy football app, like the ESPN one. Okay, yeah, but it's the same thing. Y'all really tried to get me to join the trumpet fantasy football thing when I don't even understand how football works. Okay, but like, so we made another fantasy league this year, right? Like, nobody was joining it. Like, the day before the draft, it was only me, Stephen, and Matt Harris, right? And so we're just like begging, like, everybody, we're like, please join it. And everybody was like, oh, I don't know enough about football. And like, people like Peter Tilly, he was like, I know nothing about the NFL. But we got some people to join it anyways. And then who would I play the first week? Peter, who was, like, complaining about how he doesn't know anything about football. And then he beat me by, like, 20 points because apparently I just, like, am an absolute fool. So it's going to be another year of just getting wrecked every single week in the Trumpet Fantasy Football League. I think you've done it two or three times, and you've always gotten wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> I like, man, I spend so much time like, like preparing. I'm like, all right, I'm going to draft like all these players, like go in like with this whole strategy and everything. And then I swear if I just auto drafted, it'd come out better. But yeah, I, I just, I, I think too much. That's the problem. Listen, Jonathan, I'm a champ. Okay. I'll look over your team. Right? <laughs> On the pocket. Uh, well, it's not good. I'm just I'm trying to get everybody who doesn't really know what's going on to trade me players. Oh, to like advantage of the Ainsleys of the world. Exactly. I'm like, hey Matt, like, oh, you you want Odo Beckham Jr. right? You should give me Clyde Edwards Alaire. Like, come Why on now. That Odo Beckham Jr. I don't know. I thought it was a good idea. I, I, you know, you live and you learn. Second year in a row, I've drafted OBJ say, and you kind of last year. I didn't know. <laughs> I literally draft the same exact players every year and then just like am completely just shocked when all of them are absolute trash and I lose almost every single game. So, but it's like the same underperforming players. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he likes being consistent. Just, yeah, I'm too stubborn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Trumpet Fantasy Football League, not going to go well for me. So, you can have Ainsley. Well. She's an expert. I can't join. It's too late. You could be an advisor to Jonathan. Oh, I will definitely advise. I'll just think whoever has the coolest names. Like that Sometimes one. It helps. 
Yeah, honestly, probably would have been better than whatever whatever I did. So, you know, it is what it is. There's even like, yeah, we were, uh, there's a clarinet in the Trump Fantasy Football League. I'd be pretty bad if, if she won, but. Why do you oh, hate Kenna? Wow. What? Why do you hate, why would you hate if Kenna won? Oh, okay. Here's why Kenna can't win the Trumpet Fantasy Football League. Because last year, I was in a fantasy league with her family, right? So just like her parents, her brother, her, and then me. And I mean, her brother and mom, you know, don't pay a whole lot of attention to football. And I took it way more seriously than anybody else did. And I went undefeated in the regular season. And so when we get to the Super Bowl matchup, and I'm playing Kenna. And I'm projected to beat her, whatever. I'm like, oh, this is great. You know, I'm talking trash as as I would. And then what her family decided to do was they all just, like, funneled all their best players to her through trades. <laughs> so, yeah. It, it ended up... Well, they did. Like, it was like, you know, you could still make trades in the playoffs in the way the league was set up. And so... They were all just, you know, saying, like, okay, who has the best quarterback? All right, well, we'll trade them to Kenna for, like, whatever random players on her bench. They did that down her whole roster, and I lost the Super Bowl, which I guess was fair. You know, it had been pretty bad if the one person not in the family won the Family Fantasy Football League. So for that reason, the one person not in the section cannot win the Trumpet Fantasy Football <laughs> League. It can't be allowed. But. That was probably like the only time I'll ever get a shot in the Super Bowl year, but oh well. I don't know how fantasy sports work. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I got an idea, but I learned more than the last like two minutes of him explaining that than I think I ever knew before. <laughs> oh, oh, never mind. Y'all Can just switch places. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I've like got my phone or whatever, and I like it was standing up, and I like flipped it sideways. I can't use my computer because my only like headphones that have a mic has the stupid like lightning thing on it, and I don't have like a dongle to go from my computer to that. Too cheap to buy one. I was gonna say you can get an adapter for like seven dollars. Yeah, but that's seven dollars. I don't want to spend. I can download the app on my phone for free. Okay. Yeah, so I don't care. I don't care what people use. We don't even have to use Skype if you guys have a better, you know, program to use here. Ainsley wanted blue jeans. I didn't want it. I just assumed it. Did we use blue jeans last time? I don't. All I know is that one time when I was with you and Tanner, we just went back and forth between like three different platforms to <laughs> see which one he could screen share on. Yeah, we were trying to screen share. That was. The, we should do that again. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask him if he wants to do that. Do what? Go back and forth between all these different platforms? No. Our... Talk to random people on the internet. Oh, that was entertaining. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan, we just had Tanner go on, uh, I don't remember where he's in. Omegle? Oh, God. Just talk to random people. <laughs> wow. That's but, a like, throwback, We couldn't man. hear them. Yeah, we couldn't hear them on the podcast. That was the issue. So it's just Tanner going, hey, uh, you're on a podcast? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh-huh. No, no, it was just we couldn't hear it. So that's fantastic. That's why we were that's trying fine. To program. I didn't, I didn't know that Omegle still like existed, man. It was a vibrant community when we went on. <laughs> it's crazy. I think somebody just made like a Georgia Tech version of that. Like I swear, I saw something on Reddit where like someone has made like an app where it's like that, but they're they're targeting it to like georgia tech students i don't know i'd be a little uh creeped out though <laughs> yeah yeah i know definitely not something i'm gonna be downloading or uh, being very active on but you know to each his own ainsley's downloading it right now <laughs> wait actually if it's wait okay wasn't it an app that just had text chat or also video i have no idea because there was an app tech. i saw that was on the gt subreddit where basically 
depending on where you were, you could like click on a thing and have a certain radius and chat anonymously to whoever was in that radius. And then oh, you can like I, go I to different that. places on campus. I downloaded maybe it. Maybe what, what it, it like. is. Oh, so you have downloaded it. Oh, it was oh, terrible. Daniel. Daniel was right. There we go. Yeah, I don't remember. Is what? it called? Oh, it's is it the one called like Bubble or whatever? Is that it? Oh god. <laughs> I, I downloaded oh, it because I was like, oh, I'm really curious, though. Like, what if it's very oh, active? Go ahead and explain what it is. I'm a little, still a little confused. Okay, so it's a map of campus. I don't know if you can see my phone. It's hard and basically, see. it has my location, and I can click somewhere, and it has this green circle that pops up with whatever the radius is. And it's supposed to be that whoever's in that radius, they can just send something, and anyone can respond to it. I looked at it, though, like the first time it came out, and everyone was like, or not, I would, I should not say everyone. I said when it first came out and most people who viewed it were like curious. Um, so there was a couple of people like, hey, I'm in North Ave right now. Where are you? Oh, I'm in Britain. Wow, this is cool. And that was like all the conversation that happened. Um, and now I think the community is completely dead because it's been so long <laughs> since it's been posted. <laughs> There's nothing showing up. I should start it. I'll start a conversation. Yeah. Well, their only advertising that I had seen was on Reddit, and the post only has like 30 upvotes. So, yeah, I have to say it's <laughs> probably not going yeah. great for them. But it, it seems like it, it seems like it would be just like Yik Yak, like part two. I don't know what that is. Yik Yak? <laughs> oh, man. That was like a big thing in my high school for like a week, I think. <laughs> I don't know. It was like it was another app where like you could like go to like they they have like a page on it for like our school or whatever and you could essentially just post anonymous stuff oh wait it basically just turned into everybody like anonymously bullying each other i don't think this would quite devolve into that hopefully because we're not all like 16 anymore and it just seems a little different but yeah i just downloaded it because i was like oh that'd be cool to meet people and then it turned out everyone was just like anonymous usernames and conversations were dead and there was no like it was just so disorganized. It didn't actually work in reality. And I was like, oh, so sad. Yeah. You got to be the brave one. You got to use your name and uh, you got to put it out there. Name, GTID. Yeah. yeah. Just be like, hey, hey, anonymous people. Like, you want to like hang out? Like, let's get lunch at like the exhibition hall or whatever. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Daniel, have you been to campus since the campus center construction has happened? I haven't been since late March. Wow. Where are you right now? In an undisclosed location. Yeah. I think I've told you several times. Uh, actually, uh, can you give me a state? You haven't been on the podcast in like two months or something. Right? I've been avoiding you, apparently. Well, you have. You do. Um, uh, I am in upstate New York. Yo, I'll be in New Jersey in like three months. Well, maybe I can't less. Believe. It's not that close. I'm in very upstate. If I drive to upstate New York, it's like I'm northern New Jersey, so four hours maybe. Yeah, we yep. can get some coffee two hours away. I'm having to pull up a map right now to see how close New New York is to New Jersey. New York to New Jersey. I have they no idea. They're literally bordering each other. I <laughs> oh, interesting. Like t- for me to drive to New York City is an hour. I think I mentioned this a while ago, but it's a shame that you know of the current situation because I easily could go to the Syracuse game. Syracuse. Syracuse? Yeah, we're playing the Syracuse in football. That's what I'm saying. But you're Just not going. To- you say it funny. It may just be how it's coming out. Syracuse? Okay. It, it may just, maybe I swipped. Uh, yeah, normally you would have come up here, right? You would have flown up. But uh, now you're not, so I'll just be there. Really? I was excited to go to an away game. Exactly. Because I'm, I'm outside Syracuse, that's what, that's what I mentioned. I think you did mention this to me, and I just totally forgot. 
I mention it like every week on the podcast. So if the listeners don't know by now, yeah. allocation. Yeah, no, the campus is like the student center is currently just a big pile of rubble, which is kind of interesting. So well, they're the, like, yeah. the construction is on schedule, right? I think so. That's what they said. I know they were like four months behind at one point, but then apparently, like, because of like everybody being gone for the remainder of spring and summer, they could like basically catch up because they could work faster because they weren't having to work around students or anything. So, and I think they said they could fix up or they could finish the walkways first, which would obviously be useful for people on campus. You don't have to walk around stuff anymore. Well, yeah, don't walk around much. It's just like that one corner of Tech Green that's like totally blocked off. Yeah, like where the Campanile is. They've got like a big fence up. The Campanile is like inside the fence or whatever. And there's a ton of construction on West Campus because like the, there's a water main that broke and like completely flooded the street. And apparently they're still trying to fix that to, ah, oh, gosh, what street is that? I don't know. Whatever Hemphill? one runs down. Yeah, Hemp Hill. You like can't even drive down Hemp Hill currently. So I don't even know what's up with that. And then there's they're still doing construction over by like where the old GTPD place was. With the uh I swear they're putting in some kind of like eco friendly park area there. I don't know. Yeah, I was gonna campus say, construction building. never ends. Yeah. That's it gonna never be end. Mm -hmm. That's what that's the buzzword is eco garden. It's basically just a grass field with some trees and park benches. And solar lights, probably. Oh, I don't know. I just saw a bunch of light posts go up, so that's all I know. Maybe they're having like they're gonna have like charging stations or something. Ooh. Fancy. People always want more outlets. And it helps them with their uh, green space statistics. So, um, feel like making flex, flex that on all the campus tours and everything. <laughs> I don't know. It'll be interesting. And campus will look real great in like five years after I graduate. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, It'll be always, great to come back. It's always under construction. Yeah. It's, it's changed since the five, since when I was there five years ago. Dang, you're old. Not that old. He's, you yeah, are. He's really not. But compared <laughs> to me, really not. We shouldn't have crossed paths because you were like the year beyond. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so old. <laughs> he went. Uh, he's not even that old, you know. Brian Quo was old. Brian I don't Quo know who that old. is. Because yeah. he's so. Old. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, how much older than you is he? Um. You were like two years. Six years. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Four years older than Yeah. He, he, I guess he was, what, like a, a seventh year when I was the first year, I guess? How does one become a seventh year? Grad school. He, oh, okay. <laughs> five years of undergrad and two years of graduate school. That's I good. assume in-state, because out-of-state tuition would kill you. I don't no, he's from Virginia. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so he was a fifth year when I was when I got there. What year was that that you uh, started? The fall of 2015. Oh, I entered high school. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad hey. Daniel's Daniel's not Daniel's not that old. I feel like I don't give off old. You don't no. give off the energy. It's just always like, aha. It's a exactly. It's probably aha because I don't see more. Exactly. I feel like the vibe of the section this year is really weird because all you guys like left. Plus people just didn't do it this year. And now I'm like, I don't even know who's here anymore. Like, I don't know half the people in the section because half of them are new. And the other half, I'm just like, I don't know who's still here. Well, it's the first time since the Obama administration that I'm not in the section. <laughs> so, 
So now you are dating yourself, right? <laughs> you know, it is. It. I mean, yeah, it's definitely weird. I feel like it's hard for it not to feel weird just because like how different things are. Also, like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm like one of the oldest people in the section now, though, which is really weird. I mean, oh, I think. So cool. Yeah, but it's like I don't know. It's just like. I think Steven's the only person older than me in the section. And that's just, like, not how it's supposed to be. <laughs> but, oh, well, I yeah. guess. There are cycles. That happens. Yeah. Are you graduating this year? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just curious. Why not? No, no. I'm, I'm finishing undergrad. I'm doing four and a half for undergrad and then i'm going straight into grad school so but when hopefully i'll finish yeah i don't know how long it'll take me to do like the whole master's thing with the bsms stuff but they say nine to twelve months i don't know how reasonable the nine is nine to twelve months it's yeah tough. It's a weird unit to use. Yeah, what are you doing? That's that's literally like what it what it says on the AE like website or whatever. I swear. So it could be like ten months. I mean, I don't know. I guess what they really mean is it's you. It can take you like like two semesters or three semesters essentially. But that also like just seems really short for getting a master's. I did. You my... got it one year, right? Yeah. yeah. Two semesters. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I guess it'll depend on, like, how much credit I move over from my undergrad to the grad if, stuff, but... If you're not doing a BSMS, it's just coursework. Or if you are doing a BSMS, it's just coursework. So you're not doing... Yeah. Research. So yeah. that takes out a year. That's true. I would say I comfortably did it in a year. You're also, like, weird with your... um schedule and like super on top of everything it wasn't so, even that it was four classes each semester yeah it's really not a whole lot i mean that's what i pretty much done yeah i don't know five, but i double counted two classes yeah that's the key but that's like the minimum because if you're doing it well yeah you could stretch it out to three semesters if you want if you just want to take it easy. I don't know. I'm kind of like, you know, I've taken it easy for the whole undergrad thing with the uh, with the master's. I'm just kind of trying to get out as fast as I can at that point. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Start I'm gonna... What? Go ahead. I'm just I'm going to start making money instead of bleeding it, you know? <laughs> Got to wait for that NASA job? Maybe not. Maybe not NASA, but... <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm currently like the crossroads where it's like, hmm. I want to do aviation stuff, but all the cool aviation stuff is in California. I really don't want to live in California for the rest of my life. That so sounds like, cool. You could change. Ohio. Okay. You don't have to lock in. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I got time to figure that out. I'm not too worried about it. I'm Are you worried. against the North? No. Well, My girlfriend's from Maryland, so I hope no, not. But, <laughs> like, do you want to live in the South? Or do you, would you be okay with living in the North as long as it's not out West? I just California? don't want to live in California. I worked I work in California this summer and the income taxes were too high. I couldn't take it. Housing is crazy expensive. Yeah. I was, like, living in an absolute, like, shack for, like, just an insane amount of money. It was ridiculous. They gave me, like, a housing stipend or whatever, and they were like, find somewhere to live. And the only place I could find that was, like, affordable, like, within, like, a reasonable commute to work was, like, absolute, like, to, dumpster. Like, you can use the number. To get, like, a one-bedroom apartment there, it's, like, 1800 a month. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. You can visit Jeremy, though. I could. I know. I, he was supposed to visit me, but then he just didn't come out there because, like, some global pandemic didn't want to be flying or whatever. You know? He didn't care. 
It, I think he just doesn't love me anymore is the reality of it, you know. He's got a big time job. He doesn't need you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, but it's obviously not big time enough because I updated iOS 14 today and he can't solve all the things I don't like about it. <laughs> so obviously he, he, he needs to get better. Anyone with that stuff. I'll ask yeah. him those questions and he'll be like, I don't know. Jeremy. Yeah, I feel bad literally like anytime I ask Jeremy like any kind of like tech related question, I like never asked him like expecting an answer, but just like, you know, hoping he might have fine, like just have one off the top of his head. But being Jeremy, he's not going to like not give you an answer. And so he would go and like just like do like 20 minutes of Googling and then come back with the answer like every time. He was the local tech support guy, but he got he got too big and famous for us. <laughs> Apple called his name. And he came running. Well, Ainsley, if you're up in New Jersey, we might be able to meet. Oh, my God. Wow. But, you know, I'm busy with my big time job and stuff. So. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. Well, yeah. Once I go on shift, it'll be weird. You're coming in three months in December. I was just saying when the semester is over, I don't really know what time we're in at the moment it's kind of all a blur <laughs> yeah in december i'd probably be up back on shift yeah we'll, we'll on figure it hmm? on a ship shift oh <laughs> i was like dang you're going to the ocean this sounds so cool <laughs> yeah, you should go on a ship He actually, you know, joined the Navy. Yeah. Of course. Joined Joey. Yeah, exactly. Him and Joey just couldn't, couldn't stand being apart. I was going to say, I'll Had miss to those, to the uh, Navy together. I'll miss those, like, uh, Thanksgiving flights back to Maryland with Joey and Kenna. He's from Maryland, too? <laughs> yeah. I didn't he, know there was so many people from Maryland. He literally wears, like, Maryland flag shorts to practice, like, every day. He's the most Maryland person ever. I don't and know what the flag like, of Maryland they, is. There's no thing. Okay. Hot take here. But there's no, like, Maryland pride. Except for Joey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he uh, I can't believe Kenna, you don't know the Maryland flag, though. He and Kenna, I see he in the, the crab? world. I think Kenna especially lives really close to me. Joey lives a little somewhere else. But Kenna lives in the place. Where are you from? I'm from Columbia. Not really close, but closer than Joey. Like District of Columbia? No. <laughs> I don't remember exactly where Kenna lives. But She's close. from Annapolis. Okay, yeah. That's closer than Joey. Joey lives much farther. Columbia is like 25 minutes from Annapolis. Yeah. I don't know. You're looking it up? Yeah, 30, I am. 30 with traffic. Maryland's just oh, so weird. Problem. There's like so much water. Yeah, there's a bunch of random stuff going on. I drive to Baltimore sometimes for concerts. Yeah. You can go like, like <laughs> Baltimore to New York City in four hours. Yeah, I was going to say it's like a three and a half hour drive and just stay in a hotel that night. Yeah. Wait, where are you from? You're from Columbia? Well, right now I'm not there. Well, no, I didn't say, where are you? I said, where are you from? Right now I'm from here. I'm not liking this. Columbia, <laughs> yes. It's a, su it's a suburb of Baltimore, technically. Yes, I see that. Like Towson. I know that suburb. It's a college, too. It is a college. My friend's there. I don't know why. It's where Joe Flacco's little brother goes. He plays quarterback there. Ainsley, what's the problem? I'm looking at my map. Oh. I don't know why you guys are so interested in this. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just curious. Y'all can research my time. I just, want. <laughs> I have like no concept of geography for like anything like north of like North Carolina. I that's didn't like, know where Atlanta was. That's why you hate the north. Is that correct? No, no, <laughs> incorrect. Incorrect. I do not hate the north. That is, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do that. But I still can't believe you don't know what the 
the Maryland flag is, Ainsley. Like, I am. Okay, so to be fair. Half? Is that the Maryland flag? No, look it up. You'll know it as soon as you see it. Because Joey yeah, wears it all the time. He has I don't shirts. Really pay attention to what Joey's just, wearing. So I feel like it's just hard to make. grabs the eye. I'm not seeing grabs the eye in a good flag? way. Like, well, no, Jonathan, because it's save that for later tonight, please. What's the Georgia flag? <laughs> Is that the Confederate? Oh, it's that one. Wait, why do I think there were crabs on it? They do it's like more... crabs there. Yeah, Maryland's all for its crabs. This is the Georgia flag. Is it? Kind of ugly. I mean, it's nothing special. Does it still have? No, they changed it out of the Confederate flag, right? Yeah, no. It, it, now it's no longer straight up the Confederate flag. It's the like earlier version of the Confederate flag that people don't recognize, so they won't get mad about it. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah, they knew what they were doing there. They appeased both sides, really. Like, I mean, <laughs> I saw a Confederate flag up here once. Like, some guy on a tr- was driving it around on his truck. What the heck? You see it everywhere. I don't understand. Like, I was in even in California this summer. Like, I was like, whoa, that's about the last place I expect to see that. Yeah, in New Jersey, like, if I go to different places not in my town but like around i see confederate flags all the time and it's kind of crazy i'd expect it all the time i'm talking about one guy here oh there's one that i know of that i pass like i would pass it every week and whenever my family would go to the lake our neighbor had a confederate flag up he also had like five trump flags up You really do I hate to see it. I just think it's wild that, like, you, you, I don't know. Like, I'm way too scared to, like, you know, to have the guts to have that out in my yard, man. I'd be afraid, like, someone's going to say something to me. I, so I'm so, do, like, is that what you're saying? Do you want to? What? No, want to? I'm not. But I'm <laughs> you're like, like, I don't understand. I really wish I could fly it. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I'm like, man, I don't even see, like, oh. You're ashamed of your uh, southern heritage. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm ashamed of being from the south, that's for sure. I mean, come on, I got I got the state of Georgia on my, on my water bottle here. Come on. Like, not that. I get told I mean, I'm we, too proud of where I'm from. So are you too proud of where you're from? I wouldn't say so. I think I have just the right amount of pride in where I'm from. I mean, Georgia is the best state. I will fight you about it. We have Atlanta. Come on now. You can't. Y'all don't got good bagels. Oh, that was a bad sentence. <laughs> Y'all have terrible bagels here. I mean, I see, I don't know what a good bagel is, so I can't really argue against that. But I also know that I'm perfectly fine buying my bagels that I get from Kroger. In a bag? Yeah. I, I hate looking at them. At that point, it's just like a round-shaped bread. It's not bagels anymore. That's what a bagel is. No, a bagel is so much more than just the shape. Go ahead. It's the consistency. And it's the topping. Like, y'all don't have, like, a Taylor ham, egg, and... Or, yeah, Taylor ham, egg, and cheese sandwich. That's, like, not a thing. If I'm going to eat a bagel, I'm going to eat it all right. If I'm going to eat a bagel, I'm going to put it in the toaster. It's going to pop out a minute later. I'm not going to put anything on it, and I'm satisfied. Nothing on it? Like, you just literally just eat the bread? You don't even put, like, cream cheese or anything? No, bread is delicious. Are you kidding me? I love bread. I could eat bread, like, constantly. I do eat bread constantly. It's so good. I also just have, like, the blandest, like, like food, like, flavor palette. I don't even know what you call it in, like, the oh. whole world, so... He does. He thinks water is a little too much sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I don't season, like, anything. 
like tonight for dinner i had like chicken where i just straight up like i just like threw it in the pan and cooked it or whatever it was just like a tiny bit of like salt and pepper and then I just had like plain rice and like plain broccoli to go with it. And I was satisfied. It was a great dinner. It was very tasty. You're living such a sad lifestyle. <laughs> I mean, not really. Because to me, I don't, I don't, I don't know. That's to me, that's fine. And it's healthy. So we got that going for us. Simple man. You, enjoy, you just know what you like and you're good. For it. Exactly. So Ex- much on seasoning. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of money. I say by not putting Italian seasoning or anything on my chicken, mm, one day that's going to make a real difference. All right. <laughs> this is going to put my kids through college one day is not eating food with seasoning on it. <laughs> what are you doing with your camera, Jonathan? What? Oh, I was texting somebody back. I'm not going to. Every lie. time you do it, it like makes the whole screen like. Yeah, everything changes. I'm sorry. I just I, I had something very urgent come across the phone there. You know. Well, sure. Well, but you know, just you know, everybody's like, "Oh, someone tested positive for COVID," so it's like, you know, everyone's trying to figure out who it is. You know what come section it is? Can you spell what section? No, I, I really don't know. People are asking me. They're like, "Is it a trumpet? Trumpet test positive?" I don't know. We do process of elimination. I think we should just line up every single member of the band and just interrogate them all. No, we just got to see who was not there on Saturday. Actually, that's true. Yeah, we can just take a take a look at the uh, white band roster, see what one person isn't there. And, and then also, we like, know. the people around them are probably not going to be trying to <laughs> see nice little, like, oh, cross God. And missing. Yeah, no, let's, let's not do that. That's a bad idea. I'm not endorsing that. It was not my idea. I'll take Not it. I'll in. take credit for doing I, that. I will hunt look, it back. <laughs> look, when Chris well, Moore listens to this podcast, Chris Moore, this was not my idea. You should not remove me from being a section leader. I am responsible, I, I promise. I can ask Chris. BJ to do the podcast. <laughs> you should. You should have BJ on. I feel like BJ would be great to have on a podcast. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I gotta, Who would you put yeah, on there with him, though? That's crucial. Yeah. Who should I put on there with him? Asking you. Oh, I've got no clue. Oh. Someone that will reliably be there. So that I'm eliminates. <laughs> it needs to be someone that BJ would like to talk to, though. You know? Because I don't know if he wants to talk to you, Daniel. I, that's not like an insult. Like, I just don't know. Like, you know? Wow. Okay. It's going to be a one on one now. <laughs> yeah. You've, you've eliminated your chances. Of it. And getting on with BJ. I would not want to go out with BJ. I'd be too intimidated. <laughs> I don't know. BJ's pretty cool. You could definitely bring him on, talk about lots of things about like baking and cooking baking. and whatnot. Broadway. He likes Broadway too. Yeah. I almost went to the same show as him over winter break last year. Like the same night and everything. That would have been fun if I ran into him halfway through a Broadway show. So you're following BJ. (laughs) The only issue with this is if I ask him to come on, he's going to go and look at the old episode. I don't (laughs) want him to. Like, I don't think I've said anything, but like, I still don't want him to. It's risky. I don't know what people have said. Well, Tanner has definitely been very inappropriate. What? You're telling me this isn't a family friendly podcast? I recommend this to like my. My younger sibling here, you know, like my grandparents, like, come on. My dad's that. trying to hunt it down. Oh, you trying said to find him. I you, refuse to give him the link. There's no way. full on, like, sexist a couple weeks ago. Oh, God. So, uh, I mean, it wasn't that bad, but, you know. It's terrible. Well, good. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> so. Anyway. Yeah, look at BJ. No, I think that'd be great. I would listen. I may just do a one-on-one. I could do that. What, you could do, do a three-part series with each of the directors. Ooh. I feel like Chris would be the hardest one to like sit down and just have like an extended conversation with. I don't think I've said more than three sentences to him ever. 
<laughs> yeah. Literally any time I've like ever like had to email Chris about anything, and I've heard this from like other people as well. It's like you get a response from him and it's like, okay. That's it. It's like two words or just like one letter. There's there's nothing ever there. But if you got him to talk about something he really, you know, was passionate about. Do we talk. know what Chris is passionate about? Because I feel like Chip, it's like, ooh, jazz. Yeah. And BJ, it's like, ooh, baking. But like, what is Chris like? It's obviously into, um, I don't know, I'll make it too general, but like, you know, music, uh, I would say. Ooh, music. College, college sports. You could do drum corps. I mean, he's the director drum. of the Spirit of yeah. Atlanta. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Also, drum so, bombs. I feel like he's always trying to talk about like anything percussion, percussion things. Anything percussion related. Are you yeah. knowledgeable yeah. on that? Huh? Are you knowledgeable enough on that to have a conversation with him? Point of the podcast, I come up with questions for him so I can become more knowledgeable. Oh, so you're supposed to ask us questions about what we're knowledgeable about because I don't feel like I've That's given so. any insight. <laughs> It's a different setting. That would be more of an interview okay. style. Ooh. An interview series. But I did that. For instance, uh, very famous director, Joey Bishop. <laughs> I uh, had on to talk about his short films. That was more of a Was that you know, not like two years ago? Yeah, like two years ago. <laughs> uh, but we talked more about, like, you know, filmmaking and that sort of thing. Hmm. Uh, you've got to be wanting to start a podcast now daniel now i want to sit down and interview people (laughs) well i've also i mean it's a little harder this year but you know i hopefully this podcast feed will grow a little more that we can start a second show um Mm -hmm. and you know because we because i could do like a sports show but it's a little more difficult now yeah Considering so, lots of sports are just starting playing again, you know, you were out of content or, there for a while. Just organizing it too is, is complicated because that would yeah. be a little more strict schedule wise. You could just interview someone each week. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, that idea is out. All right, scratch that one off. Oh my God. I would listen. Because <laughs> it's hard enough to book guests for this podcast so. yeah but then you only gotta get one you just can't repeat that's the only problem and that's tough to get that one it was okay. hard to get okay if you interview someone in the trumpet section like even for instance if you interview jonathan right i mean i wouldn't listen to it on my own but if i was like there listening okay. <laughs> i'd be like this is so interesting i'm learning so much about this person like whoever I, it was i'd be like wow i already did john roberts uh, I did. that was good uh, we, yeah, I did an interview with John Roberts. That was uh, something. God. I mean, he has just like a an interesting like elementary school history. Like just learning about, you know, because that's kind of where he became his own. I, you got to listen to the episode. To yeah, me. I got to go listen to it now. Like, <laughs> he's... I feel like John Roberts is just like this, like mythical, like being within the trumpet section he in the really band. Is. Like, <laughs> we uncovered a little bit in the episode, but really scratching the surface. I mean, yeah, like, I could have another just... three hours with him on, and still be scratching the surface. It just blows my mind that he's like simultaneously like one of the smartest, and then also just like not like people I know. I mean, the man has to ask me every day at practice if he's starting an ensemble or in sectionals. But then <laughs> the other day, when he's sitting there, like, we're stretching, he's looking at someone on the phone, and I'm like, oh, what you looking at? And he's like, oh, my MCAT scores. I got, like, the 99th percentile. And I was like, what? No. <laughs> imagine, imagine walking or, like, getting, like, card into surgery or whatever, right? And the doctor walks in to introduce himself and it's John Roberts, right? At that point, I get off the table and run, okay? I get off the table and run. But, nah, I don't know. It's just wild. Did you get into his break dancing as we part of the episode? Because I remember, I forget what the-
Ain't too oh. Rip. <laughs> Okay. Jonathan, are you able to? I can hear you. I can't hear her, you know. Ainsley's out. Hello. So it's okay, not that's... GGY. Oh, oh, we back. There we go. I'm All back. Right. <laughs> go ahead and repeat whatever you said. I don't know what y'all heard last. We... As soon as you started talking. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> well, I forget what it was exactly, but. I think John Roberts made this comment in front of a bunch of rats, and he was like, oh, yeah, like, I can show you all my breakdancing moves later if you guys want to see. And he gave, like, a little snippet of what his breakdancing moves were. I was like, oh, my gosh. I, I respect it. I could, I could not move like that. And even if it's I impressive. could. Yeah, no. He's, he like, yeah. on the episode, so you can learn about that. Well, I have to go give it a listen now because, honestly, John Roberts is a mystery I've been trying to solve since, like, the first time <laughs> I ever met him, so. You might have more questions than answers after the episode, but. Uh... <laughs> probably. Enjoy probably. It. You should bring on the, uh, you know, the, the freshmen onto the, the podcast. Interview I them. I don't know any of them close enough. Yeah. Like. See, yeah. I'll give friend. me the contact roster. You can just, um, you know, oh reach gosh. out to them all. Oh, cool. Anonymously just, like, get one of them be like, yeah. you have to be on this podcast with this dude that graduated so long ago. You can't dry contact them. I can oh. pop the question. I don't think it's, <laughs> like it's weird. <laughs> we'll just have to start plugging the podcast to sectionals, you know. But Announcements at the end of the day. <laughs> Put it in Slack. Yeah, we'll put it in the official chat. That oh. way they'll they'll think it's real they'll serious. Jonathan, it. Maybe you have this answer. In the band Slack, why is it that it's always the posts are always by people that are not them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So because people in leadership will like bring something up, right? And then they'll be like, they they basically don't have permission to like post in the general slack you can only yeah, post I, in there if you're like a staff ass or one of the directors and so instead of giving like other people in leadership permissions to do it they just have us like, like send in leadership and say like hey staff asses forward this to general but it's always a different person posting for a different person like it seems much more convoluted to do it this way it seems yeah, like it I think easier to just give permission to people that need permission. I agree. I feel like if you can trust this to like be in leadership, you can probably trust this to like post something in the general slack. I mean, it's not like we're going to be John Roberts and just be like, like <laughs> zero period, you know, <laughs> or like Emily Williams, like one of the clarinets the other day, just oh like accidentally, God. accidentally sit in the slack like gold. And that was it. Like, you know, I don't think we're doing anything like that. So, yeah, I don't know. It's a pretty inefficient system. Maybe it's, we can get some IEs on that. It just, I'm like, what? Why is? Why are you still in Slack? Oh, in case something happens. I got an email like, hey, where's your trumpet? I had it. <laughs> oh, did you? I was playing your trumpet. How did you? Tanner. Okay, so it did get turned in. Well, because I gave mine in at the end of last year because I couldn't fly home with it. And then I ended up not flying home, but I gave it in already. Um, and I was like, I don't have one. And they're not letting us take new trumpets out. And then Tanner was like, I have three. So I just took one of his. And he was like, oh, yeah, this is Daniel's, by the way. But you yours is broken. Them. You need to tell them because they emailed me. I was like, I gave it to Tanner. And oh, they know. Of course, I couldn't trust Tanner to turn it in properly. I should have known that. No, I turned yours in. <laughs> I assumed it got fixed by now, but yeah, I'm playing Reese's trumpet now. Why? What was wrong with mine? Uh, your tuning side was broken, and one of your vowels was like kind of bent. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, she was having to ask me for vowel oil like every practice. I swear. <laughs> I asked like three times within five minutes. I think. <laughs> yeah. Did you even play it, <laughs> or did you just hold it? It was. There? It was that bad when I got it. It also sat for all of quarantine, I assume. Yeah. 
I think the only reason mine is in decent shape is because it's the one Nadia had when she did drum core. Uh, so it's like... So, uh, yeah, I got lucky with that one. But... And I didn't realize Tanner had become the like black market trumpet dealer there. <laughs> I just... I was thinking, he was my roommate, so it made sense to just give it to him when we were uh, you know, packing up after the housing fiasco in the spring. Yeah. Mm. It wasn't that much of a fiasco, honestly. It could have been so much worse. Ainsley, hold on. Let me read something out to you. So this is, I told, like, because I told Owen this in real time, how it was happening. And this is what he sent me. Okay, hold on. Let me find I've it. heard him talk about five words. So I assume this is going to be a very short message. Uh, where is it? Oh, man. Okay. This is what he said regarding housing. So basically, the timeline has been, please leave. We don't know if you need to leave yet. Get out now. Come back and then leave immediately. I left. That's all I got from it. It was a lot of back and forth. It was, please leave. Then, oh, we don't know if you need to leave yet. And then, oh, no, get out now. Then it was actually come back, but then leave immediately. I think I blocked out of my memory because I just realized now that I went home for spring break and then I have to drive 15 hours down here, pack up and drive 15 hours home. I just totally forgot. (laughs) Perks of being in state. You know, they like assigned us all like a time you were supposed to move out or whatever. But I just like I just like the first day of spring break, I just came back to campus and got all my stuff and went home. So I didn't have to like deal with like the mass of people like freaking out. Definitely the move. Yeah. Okay. We'll wait for Jonathan to send that text message and then uh... You don't need to expose me like that. <laughs> you don't come on now. Anything you guys want to mention before we wrap up here? Um, I just want to say that, yeah, no, I, I'm going to start a podcast now and steal BJ before you can interview him first. <laughs> sure. That way, you know, that'll be good for you because, you know, I won't know what I'm doing. So I'll just give him very low expectations mm. so that when you, when somebody comes on your podcast, he's like, holy, holy crap, this is amazing. I need to come back every week now. The experienced podcast. The yes. Experience. Is, it, is it on anchor, anchor.fm slash the experience? That's correct. Wow. Oh, look at me go, man. I haven't even gotten one of your pamphlets since like six months and I still got it memorized. Run episode. Yeah, you should make t-shirts. Uh, are you going to make the design? <laughs> You already got a design. Not a t-shirt design. Make a sticker. Okay. Are you going to hand them out? How am I going to get the stickers? I can't make them. I'll ship them to you. I just put them all in my room. At that point, I just make like a wall closet. <laughs> well, that's, that's not the point. Hmm. You know, if, if you will make shirts and ship them to me, I will hand them out. I will Absolutely. wear them. Absolutely. I will wear one to practice every single day wait, for the wait, two minutes the at the shirt. beginning and two minutes at the end. I actually have a shirt on. I mean, it's a lot of money. I would have to- <laughs> it's a lot of money. money to make sure. I don't have that kind of money yet. Yet. Well, I'm still in- the, but the shirts are an investment, right? They'll pay themselves off, you know, down I don't the think they would pay themselves off that much unless <laughs> we get such a huge spike in views i mean mathematically it's possible but (laughs) but statistically impossible all right ainsley last word i made a cool tape sculpture while i sat here